Curious Sensation. I'm your host, Dan. And in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the art of Robert McGinnis. Okay, so here we're going to be looking at the book, The Art of Robert E. McGinnis. And uh, it's by McGinnis and Art Scott. Um, and uh, this is from Titan Books. In one of my earlier videos about some other... Um, paperback cover artist, um, someone mentioned McGinnis, was a, they were a big fan of McGinnis, and I promised that uh, when I came across this book in my uh, storage unit, I'd bring it out and I'd do a quick flip through of it. So um, I'm holding good on that promise, and uh, here we go. Now this book, unlike some of the other ones, like the Saunders book, um, you know, where there's a lot of uh, biography. This one, not so much. This one is almost entirely art. Uh, it gets his um, uh, biography out of the way pretty quick. You know, a little, little background on some of the illustration work he's done. Uh, there is some of his fine artwork in here. Um, but it is mostly, this is mostly about his uh, career doing uh, uh, book covers and uh, poster art, you know, popular art kind of stuff. There's some of his fine art stuff. Uh, and here's uh, seven decades of McGinnis book covers. And uh, McGinnis is famous for, ha for doing beautiful women. And you can see him here. Um, you know, there's kind of a joke. There was a, someone did a joke image where they slightly extra elongated uh, one of McGinnis's uh, women and uh, to make her legs longer uh, than even this because, uh, boy, he draws some long legs. There's a couple of them here where uh, they do look a little bit like, okay, I want to see the model you used for this. <laughs> um, you know, here's uh, studies behind the scenes stuff. Uh, just beautiful work. And, you know, the use of colors. I mean, yes, he's famous for these beautiful women. But look at this, these background covers, uh, colors. I mean, wow, it's eye-popping, you know, the way he uses these... Uh, the colors in, in these things. They really jumped off the rack at you when you're looking at these things. Mm. Yeah, I'm not that familiar with the Perry Mason stuff. Um, my parents used to have a lot of the Perry Mason books around. Um, but I read a couple and then wasn't that attracted to them. And so I wasn't paying attention to the covers the way I should have. They really liked the Perry Mason magazine a lot, too. motif hmm. it's interesting to see him do some stuff that's uh, more pop art kind of thing than his usual Reusing some of the same poses for himself. Saves a little bit of time there. Hmm. 
the, the difference between how he decided to, this was his original sketch, and then that final, that's pretty different. You can see, you, you, you know, um, I'm, I'm not going to read off the, the titles of these, the paperbacks these were for, but I mean, you can, you can tell from looking at it, you know, he, obviously he was doing historical fiction, romance, all kinds of stuff. And, uh, <laughs> that's a hell of an outfit. If you saw that pirate coming, boy, you'd be terrified. This uh, James Coburn look-alike they created for that. Wow! Wow! This, these, there's some amazing, amazing stuff here. Um, oh well, finally, I, you know, I, I. Um, I think that this is, uh, I think that the, uh, you know, he's just idealizing the legs. That's the, this, this, this cover is not too far off. I did say I wanted to see some of the models he used to see just how leggy they were. <laughs> Neon Jungle, John McDonald. That's not the cover I have. On that book. That's a good one. Romance covers, gothic romance books. <laughs> I've forgotten some of these pictures. It's been boy, it's been a while since I've popped this book open. I think I probably didn't look at it quite as much because I really was thinking he had done a lot more, you know, there was gonna be a lot more um crime stuff that I would recognize. I was thinking like, oh yeah, well, you know, he did all these covers. I probably just have the wrong versions of those books because I knew he had worked on some of those series. But, um, pretty amazing. <laughs> The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood. Wow. Oh, this is where the controversy part comes in. Uh, apparently that is a little too much glute, glutus maximus or whatever, the buttocks there on this, because then they had to put that uh, sticker over it. I don't, I don't get it. They don't, they don't have any problem with the women's bare bottoms. But the guy, for some reason. <laughs> now here's, um, here it is. I like this anecdote here. Um, so uh, Hard Case Crime was reissuing uh, a bunch of old crime novels. But it was very hard to track down the rights to the original covers. People don't realize, you know, when they're reprinting these these paper, those paperbacks, they don't get the rights to the, the original covers. That has to be a whole different thing. And sometimes the rights are kind of really wishy-washy and you, you can't be sure that if, if the original artist uh, has the rights to it. Sometimes it's hard to find, you know, good a good version of it to reprint from. So, uh, so the guy who founded Hard Case Crimes um, asked... Uh, ask a, a cover artist he had been using um, if he knew anybody who painted in the style of Robert McGinnis. And the guy goes, <laughs> and uh, uh, Glenn Orbick says, have you tried Robert McGinnis? And sure enough, he was still, at the age of 78, 
doing painting. And uh, so he did new covers uh, for Hard Case Crime. Up into his 80s, I guess, he was doing them. Um, so see, and look at these. You, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between these and the ones he had been doing 30, 40 years earlier. Uh, here's some of the movie posters he did. Odd Couple. Man. That's a... That's a... Yeah. So, I mean, this is one of the most iconic Bond posters. And uh, just great. You know, his classy style fit what they were going for for these James Bond stuff. I don't remember this one, this overview thing. That's for some the Halloween trail. Uh, I, I don't even notice so, some of these. There's the Barbarella one, though. I know the movie Barefoot in the Park, but I don't remember that. I don't remember the poster. And most of these posters are from when I was a kid, so I was only interested in so many of them. <laughs> and I do remember this one. Uh, Cotton Comes to Harlem one has, has been reused. Whenever people were talking about uh, black exploitation movies, of course, they love to roll out this graphic because it's so freaking good. Sleeper. <laughs> Let's make a dirty movie. <laughs> oh, uh, and these, I yeah, no, I, uh, in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, the uh, the the film which uh, the Sean Black, I guess. Uh, uh, these were. There were paperback covers used in that movie, and these are the fake covers that he created for this, uh, for that film. Here's some magazine stuff. The men's magazines. Good housekeeping magazine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I see why I haven't pulled this out as much. It's there's a lot. Here. I mean, it's, it's not that this isn't beautiful work, but I mean, let's face it, this was not. Oh, in guideposts was this. Uh, um, Pretty sure this is a, a, yeah, it's a Christian magazine. I, I remember this. This was a little, I think it was a digest size, wasn't it? Um, it says subscription only monthly magazine published by Guidepost Publications. It says it's free of, you know, overt religion, you know, prophesizing and religious overtones. But I seem to remember it as, you yeah. know, uh, it doesn't say, I, I'm pretty sure it was a, a digest size, but uh, maybe I'm misremembering it. But I think they used to, I, I think, although it was subscription only, I think like churches and stuff could buy it and put it out. Because I, I remember seeing it around, or maybe I just knew somebody who subscribed to it. But I remember those pretty, pretty vividly from when I was a kid. Uh, here's some stuff from National Geographic. That's cool. This, I mean, his stuff is uh, gallery art. So this is more, this is his fine art stuff. 
I mean, look at that woman's legs. <laughs> Are we sure that's how long ago? <laughs> uh, I realize that woman's wearing heels, but even so. Not that they're, not, I'm not saying it actually has to be uh, anatomically correct to be great art, because it doesn't have to be, but I can get why people were, would kind of jump around by this leggy woman. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot of these old guys who, I mean, seriously, a lot of these illustration things, when they end up later in their life painting whatever they want, a lot of them end up painting pictures of the Old West kind of thing and cowboys and Indians. A lot of these old painters and illustrators. And these, and these are terrific. Great shootout scene. Wow. Wow. Just his color work is so, so fantastic. And, um, you know, a lot of these books that I show off about um, uh, these artists, these paperback artists, um, because they're a couple, you know, they go out of print pretty quick and then they get pretty expensive. Um, I think this one's still relatively inexpensive and easy to get, unlike some of the other ones, which go for hundreds of dollars at this point. Um, I don't know if it's actually in print or if there's just more of it. It's Titan Books, and they're they're pretty good. They're, they they do pretty good press runs. So um, anyway, so as promised, there's a look at the Robert McGinnis book, and uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, like, subscribe, and uh, share the channel if you would please. Thank you.